Hey, what's up guys? Constant requests for a gun update video. And of course, even more so for a knife update video, but it's a little easier to get the guns together. Um, this is currently my gun collection as of 2012. Um, a lot of familiar faces here or familiar barrels, if you follow the channel. Uh, and of course, some missing guns. Uh, right off the bat, guns I no longer own. My uh, AK-47, which I absolutely love and I miss, but that had to go. Um, let's see what else. My, uh, my first Glock, my Glock 17, uh, which I absolutely loved. It's my baby. I Glocked it out. I did everything you could possibly do to a Glock. Uh, put a lot of parts on it. Didn't like some, took some off. But I bought pretty much every single Glock part <laughs> you can possibly find. And I still have some of the uh, funky parts for future Glocks. But... Uh, Anyway, what else? What else have I gotten rid of? Uh, my Marlin Model 60 rifle, 22 uh, semi-auto rifle. Love that as well, but got rid of that. Uh, pay some bills. And of course, my Rock Island Armory 1911. <laughs> Don't need to bring that up. Most of you guys already know what happened with that. And I'm thinking, I think that's it. Uh, these are the rest of my guns here. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of an overview. Uh, talk very briefly about each one. I think I have videos on most of these. If I do not have actual reviews, I've used all these guns dozens and dozens of times. So uh, if I am missing a review on a specific gun, please feel free to request it and I'll do a full you know, gun review on it. But anyway, first one, I'll start from the biggest, kind of work my way down. Uh, my Mosin Nagant. I love my Mosin. By the way, all these guns have been safety checked. Uh, you know, in this, this case, obviously the bolt's open. There's no... Uh, cartridges in here right now but anyway this is my my 9130 um, I got this one off of aim surplus I believe this one is the uh, hexagonal receiver and this one's from 1932 that may be upside down I don't know I'm working behind the camera but uh, I love this rifle it's a heck of a lot of fun to shoot um, I don't baby this one I mean you know you can pick up a lot of Mosin Nagants for I mean, if you're if you're lucky and you really look around, 75 bucks. But you know, they seem to go up and up with price. And the cheapest gun ever, the most coolest <laughs> army surplus gun. That you know, you say they're 75 dollars. Everyone wants one. All of a sudden, now everyone's charging 150 bucks or 200 bucks for them. But whatever, they're cool guns. Even if you pay 200 dollars for one, I think it's well worth it. Uh, shoots a 76, 7.62 by 54R uh, cartridge. Um, very, very accurate gun. Never put any kind of optic on here or anything. With iron sights, I can easily have a nice group around the bullseye. Um, I've only shot this at about 50 to 75 yards before, and that was really unofficial. But heck of a lot of fun. I, I love cycling the, the bolt on here. It's very smooth. I do have different videos on this, and I think at least one or two shooting videos. But um, really, really fascinating. Sur military surplus rifle. Uh, I think one of the most made rifles out there. Um, called the 9130 because it originally came out in 1891 and I think it was revised in 1930. Uh, during the war time, they switched over. It was a lot harder to make the hexagonal receivers, so they switched over to the round ones. That's why the hex uh, received hex receivers are a little bit more sought after. Um, not a huge difference, but if you're like a collector, people like those. But I would love to get a uh, carbine version of this. The ones that throw the uh, the huge fireballs. <laughs> I would love that. And actually, I'd love to get a new one in the future to do a project because I would love to, I know this sounds ridiculous to some people, but I'd like to get a, um, a shorter carbine version and actually cut it off into kind of a pistol grip and have somewhat of a, uh, I don't know, a Mosin Draco mix uh, just because I'm weird like that. But who knows? We'll see what the future holds. So that's my my only rifle right now, really. Or I consider a rifle. Um, then the next gun here is my uh, my shotgun, one of my two shotguns. This is the uh, Mossberg 500. This is the uh, Persuader, and uh, this one's a seven plus one pump action shotgun. You can see it's empty again. All these guns. I'm not going to show you each one, but I promise they're all empty. Beautiful shotgun, bare bones, simple. Bought this. Uh, this is my first shotgun I ever purchased. I got this for, I want to say $250, brand new. Um, I love it. It holds, uh, you know, it's already, the Mossberg 500 is already pre-tapped and everything and drilled. So if I wanted to add an optic to this, some kind of a quick um, red dot sight or something, that's cool. 
But I, you know, I basically got this just to have a shotgun. I really wanted a shotgun in my collection. This is early on into getting into guns, and I couldn't be happier with this. It works every single time I pull the trigger, it accepts up to uh, three inch shells, pretty much any 12 gauge uh, load except for three and a half inch shells. But I've shot everything from, you know, simple, cheap, you know, uh, bird shot from, from Walmart all the way up to, you know, expensive slugs. And uh, it just, you know, eats up everything. Anything I put in there, it shoots just fine. Uh, smooth bore barrel. Actually, both my shotguns have smooth bore barrels. So if I were to shoot slugs in either one of these guns, I'd want to get rifled slugs. You don't want to, if you have a rifled barrel specific to, say, I don't know, deer hunting or something, you don't want to shoot rifled slugs in a rifled barrel. So I, I do like the, the versatility of having this smooth bore barrels. But uh, gun underneath here is basically the same gun, just shortened up, different version, different look to it. This is the, uh, again, a Mossberg 500, but this one's the Tactical Cruiser. I've gone through three different style pistol grips. This one's my favorite. Um, it's got the little swivels uh, on the side there for a sling, swivel sling. I also have another uh, sling adapter for the tip here, but I don't have the sling on it right now. Um, this is my go-to home defense gun. So I'm gonna break into my house and I had time or let's say, it, I wouldn't necessarily say break into my house because I have pistols in different rooms for that kind of purpose. But um, if someone were to give me time to react, let's say they're on the lawn or they're trying to break in, this would be my, my uh, optimum choice for a, uh, a shotgun for, the, for home defense. I love this, it has the breacher tip on the front, which is very intimidating looking, but you know, if you run out of ammo, at least you have a very sharp, heavy metal thing you can smack someone in the face with, which is nice. Um, Again, it's completely empty, so please don't worry about my safety. And you're certainly not in danger at all by watching a video on the internet. <laughs> but that's basically the extent of my long guns. Uh, but I love them. I think if you have to have three long guns, of course I'm missing the uh, either an AK or an AR. I've never had an AR or M4 or any other kind of, uh, of similar type rifle before. I'd love one sometime in the future. You know, it's on my bucket list. Before I die, I will have some kind of an AK, or excuse me, an AR variant or a M4 variant. But, you know, I, I kind of like my AKs. I, I miss mine. I, there's at least three different types of AKs that I want as well. So who knows if an AR is ever really in my future. But I'm sure they're fun. I've never even shot one. <laughs> I'm totally unfamiliar with uh, ARs. But, uh, yeah, nice uh, Mosin Nagant, Mossberg 500 Persuader, and Mossberg 500 Tactical Cruiser slash Breacher. So those are my long guns. Um, by the way, the uh, the smaller shotgun here, this 500 holds uh, five plus one, five in the tube, and of course one, if you want to ghost load it, yeah, an extra one. Kind of goes, I guess, for any pump action shotgun. Uh, as far as pistols, I broke this down into three groups. Obviously I have six pistols right now. These three pistols are all 22 long rifle. These three pistols are the pistols that I carry for self-defense. Um, at any given day, if you run into me, I will have one or more of these pistols on my person. Generally speaking, I will have the Keltec P3AT, which is a 380 semi-automatic gun, a uh, little pocket gun. I love it. It's extremely, extremely comfortable. I have a, like a $5 Ace holster I got from Cheaper Than Dirt that's still awesome. Eventually, I'm going to do a review on that. It's probably the best holster I've ever had since I got into guns. Um, literally this is the cheapest. I thought it was gonna be a piece of crap and it's been working since day one. But um, just a little 380, nice little gun to, uh, to have on me. Uh, not always the best option, but it is a gun. And I will never, if I can legally have a gun, I will at least have this on me. But uh, oftentimes when the, the weather's a little bit colder as it is, you know, we're getting into uh, fall and winter now here soon, I'll most likely have a secondary gun. So this will be on me. But if I, want if i have the option to go with a bigger, bigger gun for clothing or for weather uh, i will go with one of these two um the revolver i'm liking a lot more <laughs> than ever uh, i'm i think i'm turning into a revolver guy i love semi-automatic guns oh you know what that's another gun i don't have any longer is my springfield i had two springfield armory guns um i had I'm trying to think exactly which one i had the xd subcompact and 40 smith and wesson and I also had the 9 millimeter full-size XD. Never had an XDM or anything. This is when the XDs first came out. Loved both guns, got rid of both guns, just to pay bills. But anyway, uh, I do think I am getting to be somewhat of a revolver guy. This is the uh, Taurus Model 617. You can see it's empty. A little snub nose 357. 
heck of a lot of fun to shoot. I mean, a real blast. It, it's it's awesome. I feel very confident with it. You know, for uh, for defense as well. I'm extremely comfortable. I just really like the idea of a revolver. Um, besides that, I have my Glock 36. This is the smallest 45 ACP uh, chambered Glock. This is a uh, single stack Glock as well, which makes it a little bit unique. Most Glocks are staggered. They have uh, staggered magazines. So this being a single stack, it, I mean, the reason I picked this particular model is because I wanted a 45. I, I settled on that caliber choice. I wanted a Glock for a carry gun, but I wanted the smallest possible 45 they made. And this is it. <laughs> and I believe it's the only single stack uh, Glock there is. It's uh, six plus one, which I think is efficient enough. You know, it's all about putting your rounds on target, not about, you know, spraying a bunch of ammo everywhere. But uh, that's pretty much it for my, my carry guns. Uh, as far as my fun 22s, and I have to tell you, I'm growing extremely, extremely fond of 22s just for plinking, for having fun, going to the range. Uh, I own three of them. Uh, there's at least four different 22 rifles that I want, and there's at least seven different 22 pistols that I want for my collection. Um, I want the, uh, the P30 from uh, Kel-Tec. That's the uh, 22 Magnum gun, which is really, really cool looking. Actually, you know what? I, I like the, the concept that it holds 30 rounds of 22 Magnum, more so than the look. So look, it's a little futuristic for me, um, but it seems like a really fun gun to play around with. You know, again, just for range, for plinking. 22 Magnum is more expensive than 22 Long Rifle, but uh, I, I definitely foresee a 22 Long Rifle revolver in my collection in the future uh, for plinking. Something like, you know, a, a cylinder that holds 10 rounds or something like that. Uh, there's a couple different options out there for a higher capacity 22 style revolver but really want one of those and perhaps uh, I don't know perhaps a 22 um, 1911 style gun I think that'd be pretty cool uh, you know of course I'd like a regular 1911 back in the collection I've only tried Rock Island Armory I was extremely impressed with it I loved it you guys have seen videos in the past if you know if you have seen the videos I ran the thing dirty <laughs> I didn't clean it it started to rust it still ran perfectly fine, never oiled it, nothing like that towards the end. Uh, if, if one gun did have to go the way it did, I'm glad it was that one, it was the least taken care of. But that was purposefully done, it wasn't by uh, neglect. But anyway, as far as the 22s, I love this, this is the Ruger Single 6. Um, just posted a couple of range videos with this. Um, just a really, really fun gun. Uh, I, I love single action revolvers. I really like them. I wish to have a uh, Ruger for Cuero in the future. Um, something completely different than this, maybe like a nickel finish or you know just a stainless finish or something like that. But uh, I love the idea of a single action gun. It's a heck of a lot of fun. I'm telling you, there's nothing like the sound and feel when you lower this hammer, or excuse me, when you cock the hammer back. It's just such a satisfying feeling. Okay, and of course, just the whole process of loading it, open the latch gate, Everything is so beautiful and smooth in this gun. I, I just fantastic. Uh, this is one of the original ones uh, with the three pin construction. Of course, the newer ones today, very easily found, very affordable guns. I think within 300 bucks or less, most cases brand new. But just a really fun gun. This came with a uh, a 22 cylinder, which is meant for 22 long rifle. But you know, I have shot 22 shorts out of this, 22 longs, anything in that variety will will work just fine. It's just the uh, you know, rifling starts right after the um, where a 22 long rifle would normally sit, where the bullet would poke out of the casing. But uh, you know, being in the revolver, it is. It's, it's really not a big deal to shoot 22 shorts or something out of it, uh, especially if you want you know a quiet round. You get 22 shorts and subsonic, and it's like shooting a, a BB gun in your backyard. Although I can't shoot my backyard. <laughs> if I could, I certainly shoot that so I wouldn't annoy the neighbors. But just a really really fun gun. And there's also a separate cylinder that came with it that uh, holds 22 magnums. And there is a significant, a significant difference in the acoustics and the feel and of certainly the ballistics of a 22 magnum compared to a 22 long rifle. But just a super fun gun. I really love that. Of course, this is my first gun. This is the Beretta Bobcat. Um, unique design with the little tip-up barrel. The Bobcat was chambered in 22 long rifle and its big brother, the Tomcat, I believe was chambered in 32 ACP. Uh, I like this obviously for the versatility, you know, 22 long rifle, 
a lot more versatility than uh, 32 ACP. Uh, actually, you know what? I want to say 32 ACP, but it might have been 25 ACP. But either way, both not extremely rare, but definitely more obscure rounds. The 22 long rifle, I believe, is the most common round found on the planet. So it's just nice and cheap and easy to find. But the tip-up barrel it is pretty unique. Uh, this is my first and only Beretta. I've been extremely happy with it. This is a hand-me-down gun. This is literally my first gun. Got this from my grandfather when he passed away. His, uh, his brother had given it to me. And this is what literally sparked the interest in guns. Came to YouTube and the rest is history. I mean, I was already a knife guy on YouTube, but once I got this gun, I started watching gun videos and I just got hooked. And obviously that's where I'm at right now. But really cool. Uh, the mag releases on the bottom here, a little bit different. Obviously I removed all the, all the magazines and stuff to uh, you know, make the gun safe for this video, but really cool, nice grip. It's kind of funky looking. It's kind of a stubby, weird looking gun. Uh, I don't love the way it looks, but I'm telling you, I love the way it feels and I lo love the way it performs. It's very accurate, especially for its small size. But pretty cool gun. And lastly here, is my Walther P22. This one's got the uh, laser on the front, which works just fine, although at the range it is off, so I do have to adjust it for you know, proper distance. I thought I sighted this in for 15 yards or 20 yards, but at the range it was shooting about a foot low and about a half a foot to the right. So <laughs> if you happen to see a range of video with Gabco, he doesn't stink that bad. He's actually a pretty good shot, um, you know, for his first time with uh, a lot of these pistols. But uh, anyway, yeah, besides that, a little thread protector on here, so this does have a threaded barrel. I would love nothing more than to get a canister for this in the future, or a suppressor or a silencer, as they're more commonly known uh, for quiet shooting. Uh, you know, you're talking three or 400 bucks for that if you get a cheap one, plus the $200 tax stamp on it. I can legally have them in a PA, it's just it would cost more than the gun. But I do have that for the future. I would love to get a uh, suppressor for this gun. But a uh, really cool gun, a lot of fun to shoot. Um, Really cheap. Originally, when I first got this brand new, it was kind of picky uh, with the ammo. Um, and I did have some jams, some hang ups, and stuff like that, uh, unless I was using the 22 uh, ammo from CCI, the CCI uh, mini mags and the stingers. They ran beautifully in this gun. I actually have a couple of videos on that, on the uh, issues I was having. But uh, after a while, it kind of broke in a little bit more. And I find that even you know, cheapo Winchester Super X or something. It works great. I shot this, we probably shot, I want to say 150, 200 rounds at the range and uh, no problems whatsoever with cheap ammo. So it works great. One thing I don't like about it is the magazine disconnect. No magazine in there. It does not function. I just, something I don't prefer. Other than that, very comfortable in the hand. It's great to practice with if you have, you know, one of the bigger brothers shoots nine millimeter, you know, and they even make a, a pellet gun in this uh, same style. But really, really cool gun, works great, and uh, it's pretty bad looking, and I mean that in a good way. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So uh, definitely fits that role of a fun, fun, cool, tactical gun, uh, but certainly very affordable uh, to shoot and very affordable to buy. It's not a six or seven hundred six or seven hundred dollar gun. I think I picked this up for about three hundred bucks. So anyway, I am missing one more gun. Uh, only because I don't have grips for it. It is my, uh, yes, I still have it, my little Cobra brand two-shot Derringer. It, uh, it, you know, it's got two shots, little tiny Derringer. I don't have grips on it because I'm getting custom grips made for it. I do want to start carrying it again. That'll be my, my second gun that is always with me no matter what. Um, well, of course, where I can legally have it anyway. But you'll see that in a future video. It's just a little two-shot Derringer. You pick them up for about 125 bucks, brand new, most places. Even if you get ripped off, you're talking 150 bucks. It's, it's actually a really fun, cool, affordable gun. Um, definitely would pick one of those up before I got a high point, just for the fun factor and because it's so cheap. And I just like Derringers. They're, they're a fun, cool little gun. I do, although, still want um, a couple different models of North American Arms mini revolvers. Uh, I want one in 22 long rifle. I would love uh, the Pug, which I believe is in 22 Magnum. They're, they just look like fun, fun guns and just a great little tiny backup, just something to have, you know. But, you know, like everyone else, if you're into guns, you got a long list of what you want and who knows if that list will ever get filled, but it's no different. Knives, gear, flashlights, there's always cool ones you want. <laughs> you just have to love what you have and, and that's it. If you get something new, cool. If you don't, just appreciate what you got. 
And I certainly do appreciate what I have. I, you know, still have a nice little gun collection. So you will see more gun videos in the future. I was able to, you know, obviously get to the range with, uh, with Mike Gabko and uh, Scott, who I met, which is another great YouTuber. Uh, doesn't have his own channel yet, just watches videos. But had a blast. I mean, you know, it's always fun shooting guns, but I'm hoping to get there again in the future to do more gun specific videos. Uh, there's a lot of ideas I have for, for shooting videos, not just here's me shooting, there's the target. I mean, that's cool. I, I love watching videos like that too, but just talking about different, different concepts, particularly with carry as well. Uh, I want to get it very much into uh, practicing point shooting. All right, instead of just target shooting, I think it's important to also be able to be good at point shooting because uh, when someone pulls a gun on you or you're in a situation where you have to pull your gun, you're not always going to go right for those sights and make sure everything's lined up good. I think a lot of people are going to end up just pointing it generally towards the direction of the quote unquote bad guy and pulling the trigger. So I'd like to get used to, uh, to doing that a little bit more accurately. But anyway, that's it. Just a, uh, a gun update for everyone who's been interested and asked. There it is. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate your time as always, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.